Hi everyone, and welcome back to Retro Encounter, RPG Fans Off-Topic Podcast. I'm your host, Marcos Gaspar, and today we're going back in time to the exciting days of the yesteryears, when the most anticipated moment of your year was when schooling was out and gaming was in. I have with me today two spectacular people, one being our resident guardian of the galaxy, Audra Bowling. Hello. <laughs> as well as the Midsummer Azure Dream, Kyle Seeley. Hey there. All right, and today we're going to be diving into uh, very nice uh, and very nostalgic feelings today. And I'm certain that many of you can relate. Uh, just in the younger years while you're in elementary school, enjoying your nice uh, cafeteria food, waiting for the seconds to pass, uh, click down until you, some school was out and nothing but video game was in your past. I know that's what it was for me. Uh, how about for both of you, uh, y'all? Uh, Audra, uh, how was uh, your younger years? Uh, pretty much the same. I managed to do most of my gaming during the summer, so I always looked forward to it. Uh, school was just kind of a distraction uh, that kept me away from gaming, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, it did lead to uh, what I'm doing with my life now, uh, so I, I mean, I obviously did enjoy the English part. <laughs> yes, it helped you uh, be able to read more bigger words in RPGs. That's all it was. Yeah, I mean, I will say that that probably did help me start reading at an earlier age because I do remember playing Final Fantasy Mystic Quest and not being able to read. Oh man, Mystic Quest was such a classic game. Oh my gosh, I'm not that old. Um, so uh, you remember playing uh, Mystic Quest as a, at a young age? Uh, so was that one of your uh, fonder memories uh, for when school was out? That is way too early for me to remember. Um, <laughs> I kind of... <laughs> yeah, let's go with your earliest memory that you can remember. Well, not exactly an RPG, but I do remember uh, my mother was outside gardening uh, in the summer, and I had, I believe it was a rented copy of DuckTales on the NES, and uh, I believe I was in Transylvania, uh, the, which is the second listed stage. Uh, that's the earliest memory I have of summer gaming. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Audra? For me, it was actually playing Echo the Dolphin, which is actually a pretty neat summer game, but darn, I really wanted to reunite him with his family and never could get past the whole needing oxygen. But that was a hard one. (laughs) Yeah, Echo was really difficult. Uh, That game did not hold your hand. Mm -mm. (laughs) I think that one, I was too young to really understand how that worked. (laughs) <laughs> don't don't feel bad my wife uh last uh year couldn't uh, even uh play it for the first bit of it. it it's a little confusing until you uh finally get into it i never made it past i think the killer whale i met him and then that was about it <laughs> poor echo it's okay echo i think i think he made it back to his family i think it ends happily i'm, I'm hoping that's good oh man but yeah, uh, let's see, like, R- RPG-wise, like, uh, w- what do you find, your, like, your, your fondest memories, like, uh, d- during that summer, or, like, break? Like, what game did you really grind into? For me, it was um, Final Fantasy VII and VIII, actually, and a lot of the Soikadens. I always replayed those ones. I just really liked it. I didn't have too many games back then, and I really started loving RPGs with Final Fantasy VII, so I just kind of constantly played that one to show people different scenes. Oh, man. Uh, I I hear you. I tried to get my friends into RPGs, but they weren't having it. They were just more into, like, uh, shooter games. Yeah. Except one of them showed me Grandia which was really out of the ordinary, because they never talked to me about RPGs until they said, you should play Grandia. And I was like, I've never heard of that game before. This was back when I was in middle school, and I played that for uh, the, the summer, and uh, I ended up falling in love with it. It ended up being one of my favorite games. And I could thank uh, my uh, friend at the time, uh, Chris, uh, for telling me that game. 
without him, I probably would have discovered it like maybe five years down the line. Oh, neat. I've never played it yet, but I've I've heard a lot of good things about it. I wonder if I should maybe pick up the HD one day. I have a copy on my shelf that I've never gotten to, but I've always thought I need to play that. <laughs> right now I'm trying to play Skies of Arcadia. So. Dreamcast version? Ooh. GameCube version. Okay. Yes. Oh, nice. You have a copy of that? Um, actually, Solosi let me borrow his, so that was pretty fun. Oh, that generous guy, Solosi. <laughs> Such a good guy. Oh, excellent. Um, how about you, uh, Kyle? Like, uh, is there any uh, games that you're going to be playing during the summer uh, that you're going to be uh, grinding into? Well, I've really fallen out of the habit, uh, especially since graduating high school millennia ago. But uh, it used to be that as soon as school would let out the day after we left, I would start playing Soul Blazer on the Super Nintendo followed by its sequel, Illusion of Gaia. And uh, that was pretty much my yearly thing. Uh, Star Tropics 1 and 2 would be the other set of games that I really associate with the first week off from school. Ooh. Oh, neat. Oh, I really like that vibe. Um, for myself, uh, I mentioned this uh, off the mic, but uh, it, for me, uh, ever since... Um, I was graduating elementary school. A party, uh, rather a gift my mother gave me was a uh, Dragon Warrior Monsters or Dragon Quest Monsters, if you know it that way. And I was absolutely smitten by that game. I would spend my summers on it. I would have it on my Super uh, Game Boy on my uh, Super Nintendo, and just play that all day. It would be to the point where my parents would be infuriated that I was playing this game. Uh, my dad would be vacuuming, and he would smash the, the vacuum cleaner into the game, and then he said, it shouldn't be on the ground. And I said, my dad, you're probably right. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, I lost my save files, but it was terrible. But I, I progressed through, and that was one of the first games I ever 100% completed, got all the, uh, bred all the monsters to the very end. And after that, I don't think I've ever 100% the game in my life. Oh, wow. It was a wonderful game, but I've never managed to finish it because it's just so dense. Like, Pokemon was, like, very straightforward in a lot of ways that Dragon Warrior Monsters was not. It j the randomly generated dungeons and... Uh. It, it, it's, it's a little difficult if, uh, like, only towards the end when the, it starts to become, like, 40 to, like, 50 floors, then you could get a little disheartened. I'm not gonna lie, I spent a lot of time, like... If it was a game session, it probably was just, like, one or two, uh, not floors, <clears throat> but two, uh, dungeons, and that was it. I could not put any more time into it, because I would be spending it, like, doing other things, like, uh, breeding monsters. Uh, but, yeah, that game was, game was a little ruthless, but, uh, I had a lot of fun with it. And, uh, whenever I, the, sup, the, uh, the tinge of summer comes along, I feel the, uh, the, the heat of Dragon Warrior monsters, uh, burning against my neck. And I, and then I look back and I'm like, I haven't forgotten about you, buddy. <laughs> so that said, did you ever have to leave the game on overnight to come back to it? Ah, uh, thankfully there is a way to save um, during the going uh, through the floors. Uh, you can either save at a like a safe point, like a place where you would heal or buy items. Oh yeah. Or if you had, I think, a journal. Or I forget what the, the the item's called. You could actually just save on that dungeon floor. Ooh, that's pretty helpful. It was helpful. It made me not uh, lose my save files. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's a pretty antiquated idea there, having to leave the game on overnight. Yeah, I, I'm glad that they uh, stopped that, except for... Uh, and th this is a second game that also, uh, I think, whenever summer comes along, I think about it, is uh, Wild Arms 3... Uh, the uh, what the, the hundred dun floor dungeon uh, in uh, the, oh, the wasteland? Yeah. I that is something I had to leave on because that took hours. That was a nightmare. <laughs> oh, I don't even remember doing that one. I only That's... managed to do it once. Oh wow! It, trust me, it's it, it's not worth it unless you're uh, trying to gun for a hundred percent. 
<laughs> but uh, it, it is an achievement. Uh, it, it's it was tough. And then it breaks the game because by the time you can actually finish that, you're so strong, nothing poses a challenge. Oh yeah, that would be. You'd be really leveled. Yeah, you would have to go in prepared because that that was it. Raga rule. I I, I forget how you pronounce the uh, the mo- boss monster that's in all the wall arms games. Ragu Oragla or something to that effect? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was something like that. Uh, more or less uh, the super boss of uh, the game. Like, if you could take him on, the the final boss was like a cakewalk. Like, you would walk up, uh, the final boss would try to like slam it on you, and you just, you just like brush it aside. I should have done it. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, there were many hours wasted, especially when you died. Then you just felt the worst. Well, what what uh, summer what games do, uh, comes to mind when you think of the summer, uh, Audra? Um, well, for me, it was a lot of the times like Suikoden Four and Final Fantasy X and Ten Two. Usually, I always thought of those just because of the beach settings and Chrono Cross. And I like a lot of the ones with beaches. Tend to remind me of summer. Mist Two. I played that at my aunt's on over summer, and I'd get them really annoyed with me there because I would never stop playing it. <laughs> Even I, though I never knew where I was going. <laughs> I never got into Mist because uh, I had no idea how to play it, but I always admired people who could get through it. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming Mist was a very fun game? Um, it was... I think it was more <laughs> I just wanted the challenge and it was something to do at the house. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah! I, it is a game I played. <laughs> yes. No, no, but I hear you. Um, and I totally get the beach setting. Like, personally, so we can in four, one of my favorite games of all time. I don't care what anyone says. The opening... I loved it! Yeah, the opening, um, the attraction or whatever, the, the music, uh, La Mer by Koba. Oh, mm-hmm. a chef kiss. Love it. Yeah, that was great. Yes. <laughs> oh man, I'm, I'm sad I can't find it on iTunes, but uh, at least I have YouTube and uh, one person that has the HD uh, upload of it on there, which is like 480. Neat. I like so we could in tactics too. Actually, I thought that was a good follow up. Random. <laughs> oh no, it's not random. It, like like three to four left a lot uh, like uh, unresolved. Uh, or at least I felt like it did. So I'm glad that they added tactics into it. Yeah. It was always very... Reminds me of summer, just... And, um... Kyla, what games uh, do you usually, uh... You, what, what was the games again that you said you usually uh, play every year? Was the, the Quintet, or was it? Uh, Lucia uh, Gaia you... and uh, Soul Blazer? Yes, that is correct. Uh, and being an American... I never really uh, got around to Terranigma until much later in my life. Uh, see, it looks like uh, the first time I played Terranigma was like 2010, and after that, I absolutely had to just include that every year because it's just like watching Back to the Future 1 and 2 and then saying, okay, I'm done without watching 3. Oh, and that's the Western one. Yes. Terranigma was a great game. Uh were you telling me you're going to be playing those three games this summer? Oh, no. Uh, I, I would still like to. Uh, in fact, I have already started writing a feature on Soul Blazer, except I just I keep stalling on that. There's so much else going on this summer. I mean, we've got Final Fantasy XIV, Shadowbringers. Uh, I'm still working on Kingdom Hearts 2. I've been doing the whole series, trying to get to 3 the proper way. I just... <laughs> But uh, yeah, that that is something that's in the pipes. Uh, I would say probably I'm gonna try to squeeze it in late July, early August. All right, now I have a question: Do any of you guys uh, play uh, like a like a Harvest Moon games or like Rune Factory games? I have not. Have you played oh, Stardew boy. Valley? Obsessively. <laughs> I actually played that for the first time. I got a gaming PC that I mean, I've never had a decent computer that could actually run anything beyond like an ZSNES. Like, so here we are now. I've got all this uh, power, and so I'm playing a game that looks like it could be on Super Nintendo still. 
But excellent game. Oh, man. I see what you're saying about the summer feel there. Oh, neat. I want to try Rune Factory in particular. Rune Factory is a lot of fun. If you like, uh, if you like, like, just farming simulation games, or, like, say, if you like Stardew Valley, I think there's, like, fighting a fighting in Stardew Valley, but it's not too much uh, involved into it. Uh, I, am I uh, taking the truth? Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty much relegated to specific zones, and you can completely avoid it altogether as far as I uh, am aware. Uh, you can actually choose a farm type that has monsters come out at night and fight them. I've not tried it yet, but it seems interesting. Yeah, but uh, so, that, so that's good then. then I might give uh, Stardew uh, a shot. But it's... I want to say Rune Factory is uh, like R- RPG fight, fighting than uh, si- uh, simulation. And if that, uh, that's what you like, like RPG story, then you're probably going to like this game. Okay. Yeah, I, I tend to gravitate towards those, so that would probably be mine. My cup of tea. <laughs> My cousin was obsessed with Rune Factory back in the day. Oh, I, I still am. I'm looking at my whole collection right there on the my shelf, especially that pre-order uh, squirrel monster that comes with the second game. But it, it's a good series, though. So. I mean, I'm a completely like biased about this, and don't take my uh, anything I say as like uh, credit for like it being amazing. I just really love it. Like Steambot Chronicles, I think is the best game in the world, and anyone that disagrees just doesn't know what a good game is. So many games I would love to play, but never got around to. Yeah, I have a big backlog too. Oh. Well, what 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 game uh, would you hope that like one day would come out and that you'd play like during the summer? Uh, just uh, just like n- nice hot weather, just uh, with your legs out, just nice game and playing. Maybe drinking a hot coffee or maybe or iced coffee. Maybe maybe just even a chai or a tea, or maybe a cup of water. Red Bull for me. Or even a Red Bull energy drink. <laughs> <laughs> Legend of Mana, hands down. I I don't know what it is about that game, but it just it really puts me into that world and just I would love a remake of that. I keep hoping for it, hoping for it. Maybe we're gonna get one eventually, the way things are going with that series, but <laughs> for me it would probably be Oddly enough, either Mass Effect or Ligaya. I'm not sure why. I just think they're fun games that kind of almost have like a movie feel. Ooh, what's Le- Ligaya? Um, it's actually an interesting... It has a combat system that's similar more to fighting game combos. So it's pretty interesting as far as combat goes, and it's just kind of a fun... I guess breezy game would be how I'd describe it. Cool. Do you know uh, who makes it? Um, Eidos did Dual Saga. I think it was um, Eidos and maybe even Square Enix did the Dual Saga, which was the second one. Sony did the first one, I think. Oh, Here. wait! I think I know what you're talking about. And maybe I just pronounced it differently. Uh, differently. Uh, uh, is it a PS2 game? Um, the second one was a PS2, and then the first one's a PlayStation game. It's Legend of Ligaya about, like, Mist and... Oh, that game! Oh, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, no, that'd be really uh, cool to play. Which actually, um, that shares a at least one musical track with one of my other summer obsessions, Alundra. Ooh. I do not know why they share the same track, but uh, that's something that's always fascinated me. Neat. I didn't know that. Wait, they, they share the same track? Are they made from the same people? That's what I'm wondering. I'm, I'm like looking that up right now, and I'm not really sure. Uh, in Lagaya, it says uh, it's the track that plays when you meet Kara. And in Alundra, it's the sad song when people die. Oh, I know what song you're talking about. Really? That's interesting. Kind of reminds me when they uh, reuse classical music uh, in video games. It's like, hey, I know what song that is. That's from the Carnival of Animals, the Aquarium, because everyone loves using that one. 
Oh, yeah, it's like uh, in Final Fantasy VIII, how they had to redo the song uh, from the landing at Dalit. I believe because it sounded too much like, I think, The Hunt for Red October. Let's see, is that like uh, towards the beginning of the of the game? Yes, yes. Oh, oh, the track, uh, The Landing, right? Yes, I don't remember if The Landing is the song that it originally had, or if that is the one that they changed it to. Oh, if that's the one I'm thinking about, that's one of my favorite FF8 tracks. Uh, you could hear the original one on the demo of the game. All right, I'm gonna have to give that here. That that now you have me intrigued. Yeah, I hadn't known that actually. It's pretty neat. I tend to like the FF8 music, so I'll have to give it a listen. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to go uh, back to uh, one more time uh, to like uh, just like summer gaming in general. Um, like as a kid. Uh, it, you, Andre, you said you liked uh, or rather loved like games like uh, Final Fantasy VII in the Suikoden series, right? Mm-hmm. Well, what was it about like FF Seven that like uh, got you you hooked on uh, and wanted to show it off to people? Well, it was actually just my first real exposure to an RPG. Before then, I was really playing more platformers and fighting games, so I just really fell in love with the story and characters and kind of just thought the cinemas were great. So I really just was like, ooh, I have to I had multiple saves that I could show people different scenes and stuff. And I still remember my grandmother going, why is she showing us this? (laughs) 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 Oh, I have family like that. (laughs) Yeah. Except for me, it was my mother just like brushing me aside with a broom saying, that's nice, go play in the corner. (laughs) Uh, for me, it was my grandfather saying, uh, are you two playing on two-player on one-player RPGs? <laughs> oh, that's great. But I understand wanting us to share. <laughs> I mean, if you were playing a Tales game, you could say, yes? If only. I have always wanted someone to play one of those all the way through with me. Oh, my gosh. Uh you can play them two player. Um, the Tales game, you can uh, the battles are uh, two players, or you can have multiple people uh, take the control uh, control of the characters. Oh, wow. I don't know if uh, Tales of Fantasia had that, but I do know it stretches at least as far back as the second entry, Destiny. Uh, but you had to equip like a ring or something and waste an accessory slot to enable yeah second controller. Oh, yeah, I usually think of Symphonia. That's uh, that's. That that's the uh, the earliest, uh, more easily accessible for me. Uh, the players, my family. Yeah, the only one I was aware of really was like Child of Light, where you could control the Firefly. Oh, that is person. interesting. I wouldn't have even thought of that one, but yeah. Oh right. Oh, that's right. I remember seeing a speed run, and uh, I think one of the speed runners' kid was uh, helping out. So that's actually really cool. I totally forgot about that. It was a neat little touch, I think. I'll have to find someone to play a Tales game with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like, now that I'm talking about this, it reminds me of a... Uh, yeah, I remember like another game that I would play during the summer was uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, like the GameCube release one. And just playing by myself, it's like, man, this is a fun game, but man, it's really sad playing by myself. It was so fantastic, and I can't... I started playing it as a party game in the mid 2000s, and it just got to the point where, like, when I tried to play it solo, it was, as you say, very depressing. It just it felt like the game was gutted. But, like the perks were definitely, uh, even though you played by yourself, you had an awesome Moogle following you around, and uh, yeah, I remember you could spray paint or just color this Moogle whatever you wanted. But I am glad they are bringing that to the Switch. That should be yeah. a fun game. Oh Switch. my gosh, I'm going to have so much fun playing that <laughs> with actual people. Well, that's something uh, that might be fun for people on the site to stream. Wink, wink, we're talking about you streaming. Please, Scott, please, please play it. <laughs> <laughs> I will say in my uh, early 20s, 
played a lot of Fantasy Star Online on the GameCube, uh, split screen with friends. So I am quite excited about the PSO2 announcement, late as it is, because uh, I'm really hoping I can get some friends into that and kind of revisit that era. Oh, wow. I totally forgot about that one. Yeah, I used to play um, a lot of Final Fantasy XI in college and everything and had fun during the summer doing that. Final Fantasy XIV should be pretty fun with Shadowbringers. I'm impressed so far. <laughs> it sounds awesome. I, I need to maybe one day go back into Final Fantasy XIV, but I'm like, time. I need time for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I wish I had time to play, like, MMOs, but uh, usually my kid takes up my time, and I absolutely uh, cherish her, so I probably won't Aww. be jumping into Final Fantasy XIV for a long time. But darn it, well, you folks uh, enjoy it so much that uh, I could just watch it, uh, a gameplay videos of it instead. I mean, they do keep streamlining it by the time you jump in. They may have it like so smoothly running that you can blaze through. Oh, that's true. Uh, I'm reminded, uh, th- this happened uh, last summer. Um, I, I generally play as a white mage, and what was happening was my computer was lagging a little bit. And what happened was, I forget which dragon uh, fight, but it, it had uh, one move that could just wipe you out in one shot. And because I had just a tiny bit of lag, when I would see uh, my character like dodge the attack, like, oh yeah, I dodged the uh, the, the hit, no hit area, or rather the no life, or no survive area. Like, my character would just be standing and just uh, topple over. Ooh. <laughs> and that happened like three times in a row. And I remember my team, uh, they were like, oh, no, you, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You can do it. And then, like, after that, that like, third, fourth attempt, like, all I saw was uh, an ellipsis and then that, saying that I got booted from the team. Aww. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was really hilarious. Lag. Yeah, I thought it was really hilarious. But at the same time, I was like, <sighs> Oh, man. But, uh, be, yeah, since, uh... That's another thing. Online games uh, taking up our summers. Uh, well, what can you say about uh, Final Fantasy XI? I've always wanted to play that, Audra. It was pretty fun, I thought. I haven't played it in forever. <laughs> but I really enjoyed playing it um, back in the day, I guess. And just having fun with friends and meeting other people online and ended up forming having a nice little link shell communication group that was pretty fun to follow oh nice uh what uh race did you play as i played as the mithra leave the the cat people see that's a wise decision i also play as the cat people i think they're mikote and yeah yes. i'm just the boring human oh no 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 they're humans are too. He was are boring. For a couple of years, I was a lizard person, but uh, <laughs> I, I went back to my main original character. <laughs> what Kyle's saying is he was originally a actual lizard person uh, from the Illuminati. <laughs> that just sl- slipped by accident. What was that? I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> X-Files theme plays. Uh, uh, but uh, you said you play as uh, a uh, the the human race, uh, Kyle, for fourteen. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know why. I just kind of looked through all the character models, and that was uh, the one that appealed to me the most. Oh, uh, what race did you play? Ah, uh, not race. Uh, class. Excuse me. You know, I started out as a warrior, which I picked specifically because I wanted the maritime region, uh, Limsa Lominsa. Ah. But then it grew on me so much that I mained it through two expansions, uh, only switching to Bard for Stormblood. Oh. And now I'm back on Warrior. I was pretty much a red mage. Oh, see, that's cool. Um, where are you in the 14, Audra? Oh, I'm not really playing 14 anymore, so... I was actually on the original version of the game, so I need to have a lot of catching up to do. Oh, okay. Don't worry. I'm really far behind, too. (laughs) 
But I like to keep tabs on it because it's it just keeps tempting me to come back. <laughs> it, it is a cruel temptress because it wants my money. It, it's going to get it eventually. Yeah. Oh man. Looking at my 1,590 days subbed, I, a single tear rolls down my cheek. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is you've already gotten all the perks and there's nothing more. <laughs> yeah. What was like the, the, the final tier of perks for uh, 14? You know, I actually don't remember because when I got about halfway up the chain, when it started being you have to sub for quite a few months to get anything else, that was when they restructured the reward system, and I just got everything that would have taken me another year or two all at once. But I want to say it was Zidane's outfit from 9. It may have been Squall's. All right. I remember something about Squall. So if it was Zidane's outfit, that, that'd be really interesting. It's been years, which is weird because it doesn't feel like it. Nah, I hear you. Like, it only feels like it's been like a couple of weeks since I've had a kid. And I looked over and it's been over like a year and a couple of months. <laughs> I'm like, oh wow, I am old. <laughs> Time does fly. <laughs> They'll sneak up on you. <laughs> oh, yeah. But is there uh, any uh, particular topics that you want to hit uh, before we uh, wrap it up? Yeah, sure. Actually, um, you mentioned right. having a child now. Is this your first kid? And will you be indoctrinating them into summer gaming traditions? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, this is my first child. Uh, very wonderful. Uh, I absolutely love her. She's great. She uh, keeps me uh, entertained all the time. She's to the point where she's uh, walking just fine. It's, but she's it's not like a perfect walk it's a kind of she tumbles side to side uh and when she like walks she kind of walks like a duck her like her, her front body leads forward and her butt sticks out and i'm like oh <laughs> i have a walking duck <laughs> uh but uh she's she i i actually have to keep her away from video games because i see how she looks at my phone when i play a game or when i'm on my switch and i'm like She's going to be obsessive like me with games, uh, like when I oh, was yeah. y when young. Uh, Cause I let her uh, play my uh, Switch uh, with uh, Undertale. It was just like at snowed in or some uh, early stage, and she was just moving around. And I was like, I don't know how you're doing that. You're way too young to be understanding the concept of like going back and forth. And she oh, was wow. yeah, she was doing that. And then uh, best reaction, I took the Switch away. I'm like, oh, we're gonna take that away just for a second. And she looked at me and she was like, whoa. <laughs> oh no I was like that was a weird cry I never heard that but w when you're a little older uh, then we can uh, get into gaming but I think uh, eventually uh, she probably will be playing games I, I don't think I'll have to indoctrinate her I think she'll do it by herself she's already a natural oh, oh, as yeah. tends to happen yep it's a good game to start on Undertale I just have to tell her don't kill anything or you're going to be very sad <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's. I definitely think she'll be the uh, the RBG uh, gaming kind of a uh, person, uh, especially before school starts. I think she'll uh, definitely get into that. And I can already hear it now. It's like, Daddy, like, what's this word? And I'm like, I can't tell you that word because that's a bad word. That was me. <laughs> what's this word? I'm like, oh, why are you playing No More Heroes Three? Uh oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm definitely putting parental uh, locking on my systems. I say that, but when I was that age, they didn't have those words in my games. Yeah, because uh, that was like, a, for me, that was, uh, my earliest game for me was like NES games and Atari games. Like, I was lucky if they was translated to correct English or grammar, if I was lucky. Let alone Somebody grammar. set us up the bomb. <laughs> Good yeah. old cats. First system was a Genesis, so I don't think there was really any cursing on that one too much. Then I, FF7 was a big eye opener on that. <laughs> oh yeah, I could see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, my favorite was the T line. I want to know the line. brand of that tea that he keeps talking about. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Just shut up and sit down, drinking gosh darn tea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, that's a typical father. Yep. We won't talk about the fact that Sid is, like, basically around my age right now. How old was Sid? 
Uh, I don't know exactly, but I know he was in his 30s. I want to say around 32. Uh, He's about my age, too. Yeah, it just blows my mind when a character that I'm like, wow, that character is so cool. Who You know, an older character when I was a teenager. Now I'm looking at these games and revisiting them, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's an eye-opener. Yeah, it always bothers me when... Uh... Like in just an anime and RPGs, the third thirty year old is like portrayed as like this old guy. Yeah, I there's um, Trails in the Sky. The journalist dude in it was funny. He goes like, "I'm not that old, damn it." Or something <laughs> something well, in it. I was like, "Thank you." <laughs> think about it though. They live in like these RPG protagonists live in worlds where. Like, they put their lives on the line constantly. Maybe, just maybe, 32 really is an old man in, like, say, a Tales game, you know? Oh, what do we in the oh, 1500s? I, <laughs> I survived, the, like, uh, disease itself. Man, 30? That's a good year. Well, something like um, Tactics Ogre, a lot of those characters, I could kind of see that being the Yeah, case yeah, I could see that. Uh, and not so much Fable, where it's like, you know, you play the game for like a week or two, and you're already a decrepit old man. Oh, yeah. I've seen some playthroughs of Fable, that's, that's true. <laughs> I will have to say, though, that if you give me the option to play as Grandpa uh, in the beginning, I will play as Grandpa. Playing as a Grandpa is fun. Yes, uh, I think about uh, Xeno's, uh, Xenoblade uh, Chronicles X. Where it just gets you like the older, older like guy in his forties. I'm like, I'm gonna choose that guy. He's cool. I can relate. When I tried Fallout Four, of course, my first thought was, let's make an old man. <laughs> Grandpa wins. But was there anything else uh, you two wanted to hit on? I mean, aside from like the whole opening to Kingdom Hearts Two taking place during summer vacation, and my having played that within the past few weeks. Uh, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, there's a few games that feature summer, like a summer vacations thing, like um Trails of Cold Steel or Persona, which is kind of neat. You get oh, to yeah. see summer play out. Yeah. That's a good idea. I didn't think of Persona. Oh wow, yeah. I I as sad as it is, I'm one of the pr- people on the sites that has not played really any Persona game except for the fifth one. So I know nothing about that. I don't know anything about Trails of Cold Steel. So uh, this these take, these take during a place in the summer, you said? Um, they have summer parts to them where you go on, like, the summer breaks and... <laughs> oh, kind of like the, um, excuse me, the beach episode of an anime. Yeah. Yes. Oh, man. So what you're saying is fan service. Yeah. I'm Pretty much. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Hey, don't feel bad, though. The only Persona game I have ever beaten was Persona 1 on the PS1, so I'm a bad, bad Persona fan. I'm, I've am i beat Persona 3, and then I think I have... I'm not too far into Persona 4 or 5, so I'm not too bad. Not too far behind. Oh, nice. Still need to catch up on them. <laughs> yeah, I, I told you about... I uh, forgot about uh, the guy... Kind of- summer settings like for me when i think of summer settings uh in games i think of a uh, rune factory like it's particularly a frontier uh like just summertime just being blazing hot and again it's just a repeat hey it's the beach episode from an anime look at these girls in swimsuits i'm like no thanks yeah that that happens a lot <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was actually uh, kind of part of what drew me to Star Tropics as a summer game. I mean, initially it's just because I loved it and I grew up with my parents playing it. And so I, as a result, played it and fell in love with it. But, I mean, the story takes place. I mean, you're going to visit your uncle on an island under the Southern Cross during summer vacation, I'm pretty sure. So, like, it just kind of puts me in the mood if I play that right at the beginning of the summer. Oh, neat. I actually finished up a, a visual novel game called Corona Borealis that was kind of similar. You go to the, the south and during the heat of summer. Oh, that sounds it's interesting. Like that. Yeah, it's pretty nice if you like just more friendship building and stuff in your games. I like to read about the visual novels that other people on the site play. 
Yeah, it's pretty. I I like learning about them too, just to see what they're about. Um, I actually did just have a thought that travels back to the whole summer. How did it change our playing habits thing? Blockbuster video. Uh, I remember uh, in, I guess, middle school maybe. Uh, in elementary school, we went to a mom and pop place, but then we got a blockbuster every Friday. My mom would take me over there. I would rent two games, play those all weekend. Summer, it was a lot more frequent. And did you guys have like any experiences related to? Oh, hey, I'm going to rent more games because I have more time. Yes, I, I did end up renting a, quite a few more games during the summer. Yes. I was allowed to more more often than not. I had to keep a limit on my gaming during school years. Any particular game that uh, stood out during your renting? Um, I usually played the fighters. Actually, one of my first ones at Blockbuster was Bushido Blade. Oh, nice. Uh, the PlayStation game. Nice. Yeah. That was a pretty interesting one. I spent a lot of time on Air Guys, particularly the uh, RPG side mode. <laughs> Oh, I loved your or I oh. can't say it. <laughs> oh, that's how you pronounce it? Oh wow. I, I I didn't even know if I was pronouncing it properly. I'm just guessing. I picked it up because of the SF seven characters, but the RPG mode was actually pretty good. Yeah, I ended up preferring that to the fighting mode. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Man, that for me the it was major video. Uh, but then it got bought up, or rather, the, the place uh, went out of business, and it became a, a blockbuster store. And yeah, every Friday, that was it was always a movie in the game. And that's where I first came across Final Fantasy 3, uh, or Final Fantasy 6, as uh, you know it. But after that, that, that game uh, definitely was one of the games that spearheaded my love for RPGs. And oof. Oh, that, that was a fond memory, just playing that. Uh I don't think I played that one during the summer, but that's something uh, that came with that. But yeah, summer renting, yeah. A lot more games. Oh, man. I remember renting so many bad games. <laughs> yeah, you usually picked out not all winners. <laughs> See, my parents usually did not have any rules against, no, you can't rent that, it's too grown up or whatever. But for some reason, my mom would not let me rent Streets of Rage 3 because of the rating on there. Really? Oh. My mom was okay with me playing more mature games as long as she supervised it first just to make sure it was okay. Like Mortal Kombat, it was so cartoonish that she was like, yeah, you can play it. But meanwhile, she's letting me watch Friday Night at three years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird. That's something I, I noticed too, like a lot of horror stuff. Like uh, my parents let me watch like Child's Play or uh, just uh, any of the Friday the 13th stuff. But when it came to games, she was very, uh, you know, very regulated about that. And I remember one day she let me read to the N64 game. It was Doom. And I was like, I don't think you understand what you're getting into. <laughs> Before, I want to say something about it, but I was like, I want to see how far I can go with this. <laughs> and it got really far. I was like, I was able to play the game. I don't think she uh, mentioned anything. I was like, I don't know. I don't understand what you're regulating anymore. How about family vacations? Uh, I never really went on those much after I got older, but when I was very young, we did go. My father, my mother, and I, uh, we would go to uh, this little cabin uh, along the side of, like, a lake. And uh, I do remember, like, playing on my old four-color Game Boy uh, Final Fantasy Adventure. Uh, I don't know why that sticks out so much, but I just... Uh, I definitely played a lot of Game Boy if we were on a trip. That was actually my one exposure to Pokemon was on a trip, actually. My cousin had it, and so I ended up borrowing their Game Boy for quite some time. I think I eventually gave it back. <laughs> <laughs> you think? It was fun. <laughs> In my defense. <laughs> I don't see enough kids playing handheld video games these days. Those darn cell phones. Yeah, I see a lot of tablets and cell phones. Every once in a while, someone will have a DS. 
Yeah, I see uh, the 2DS. Uh, not the, the big one, but the one that looks like an actual 3DS. I see that mm-hmm. uh, quite often at my work of, uh, place of work. Just to... This topic really lends itself to uh, getting off topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I guess that, that comes with the territory. Like, you try to think of uh, what was that? summer... Just anything summer break or summer related. It's really just a type of re- relaxation, all the good stuff like that gets related to that. Like uh, for me, video games, uh, playing Rune Factory in a smoldering hot room, drinking a hot coffee, watch my character tend the farm while I just sit there just getting more pounds. And I'm like, man, I did a lot of work today. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the final topic that I have in mind that I'm curious about is at the end of the summer, when you knew that school was coming back in one week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever, you felt that, that the walls closing in. Did you like save a particular game where you're like, I want this to cap off my summer because this game is just so fantastic. I never did. I just remember trying to finish as many as I could before school started. Cause I knew I wouldn't have as much time for them. I do hear that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think for me, uh, it was usually a, a Zelda game that was uh, uh, that I would play like in August. Uh, it was both a link to a, pa- a link to the past, uh, Ocarina of Time, and also um, the Wind Waker that I played during the summer. And each time it was uh, in the last m- months uh, each. I don't know why it landed that way. It was not even like, oh, I'm in the mood to play this as a summer game. It's just that that's how it uh, landed. Oh, neat. Despite the fact that I'm the one that brought up the question, I don't believe I really did that. Uh, I had a bit of an OCD problem where I would like make a list of all the games I wanted to play over the course of a year. Um, I'm looking back through those, and I'm not seeing any sort of rhyme or reason to what I played in August. Do you usually like end on like one of your... Uh... Like Soul Blazer or like Terra Enigma or any games like that, usually end the summer on that. Uh, no, usually it's July, June first that I I do Soul Blazer, but it's been so long since I've done this because you know college, job, all of these like grown up responsibilities have really like just kind of made summer not seem as special as it once did. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way when it comes to gaming now. Oh, being an adult stinks. <laughs> Responsibility. Oh, <laughs> why did I grow up? Old people keep telling me not to grow up. No, but I, I hear you. Um, that's why, like, I get a lot. I have such a large uh, backlog because I'm just really busy all the time. And now that uh, I have a kid, uh, my time, whatever time I would have for video games gets uh, transferred right to playing with my kid. Uh, don't worry. I'm like, one of these days she's going to be like, I want to play Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. I'm like, that's a good decision. Yes. Yes, she'll like that. And I'll that day have... may come sooner than you think. Yep, and it's like, alright, now I got Player 3, got my wife and my kid. Now I just need to make another kid and get Player 4 in there. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best story for Dad, why was I born? <laughs> like, stop talking, Player oh, I... 4. <laughs> Number four. Name him player four. Kind of like the Umbrella Chronicles. Number four. But uh, hey, uh, thanks so much for uh, everyone listening uh, today uh, to this uh, wonderful summer episode that went a little off the rails, but hey, we had a lot of good points. Now, Audra, where can people find you? Um. Actually, just with my email, Audra B at RPGFan dot com. I don't have any Twitter accounts yet, so <laughs> pretty much the same as always. Kyle S at RPGFan dot com. If you have any suggestions for some sort of a think piece or something, uh, shoot them my way, and I'll see about writing them. Excellent, and for myself, I'll. Uh... I am uh, uh I am Rhythm Roo, uh on Twitter or you can even uh email me at music at rpgfan.com or markersg at uh, rpgfan.com uh to get a hold of me. But yeah, uh super ex- if you've been uh following uh Retro Encounter listeners, uh 
get ready. Episode 198 will be another uh, episode of Trials of Mana. Uh, that's going to have Alana, Greg, Mike, and Zach on it, if it's uh, your first time listening. As for uh, August, uh, <laughs> excuse me, August game that's coming up, uh, get ready because things are about to get a little chilly uh, with The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel. Does it, it doesn't take place in winter or a cold place? I, I don't get the cold steel part. Um, the cold steel is actually, I think it's a reference to the train tracks. There's a lot of trains and stuff, and, and maybe even the swords? I cool. don't know. <laughs> cool, I know nothing about this game series, but hey, they're going to be playing that over in August. Uh, and another thing uh, to check out for is episode 200 is coming up, and it's going to be a big one. I know. Um, the senses are a little tingled. Uh, I, I kind of want to see what's going to happen here. I want to see what Solosi's planning. Mm-hmm. I really don't know, but it's so hyped up. Now I'm like, what is this going to be? I mean, it better be something huge. I I, I want to just sit there and just like listen to the whole thing in one go. I don't even want to know about it. I'm going to get off uh, just like anything about the podcast uh, setting up. It's just like, all right, this is going to be it. This is it. <laughs> No, but thank you, uh, thank you, Audra. Thank you, Kyle, for uh, joining me today on this uh, wonderful topic of uh, summer games or games in the summer. Oh, you're welcome. It was fun. As always, I enjoyed our discussion. Ah, excellent. As for me and myself, I'm going to go play Root Factory. I'm going to drink hot coffee, and I'm going to pretend I did a lot of work and just sweat on the couch. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. See everyone.